Yes, brother? We're so close to our goal now. All the key fragments fit, but nothing's happening. There's a fable about the gate, but I don't know how it could help. Do you think the gate opens when we tell it a story? <laughs> Why not? We are in Zazura after all. Not quite. And that's the problem. What are these symbols all around it? Hmm. Perhaps there's something about that in my notes. I can at least say they aren't Egyptian characters. You said that the key has to be turned somehow. Yes, in a very particular way. I'd like to hear the story about the gate. Once a little bird sat in front of a white gate that was embedded in a huge mountain. He couldn't go up the mountain because he had broken one of its wings. The bird was lamenting his misfortune when a cat sneaked up. Because the bird had never seen such an elegant animal before, he asked it bluntly if it could help it. The cat was surprised at the courage of the little bird. She decided to wait a while before eating it and asked it what it needed help with. The bird spoke of its nest above the gate and that it absolutely had to get back to its eggs. There was nothing easier for the cat than to climb up there and she offered to carry the bird in her mouth. She planned to eat it and the eggs, but the bird didn't suspect anything. He climbed thankfully into the cat's mouth and she jumped from stone to stone up to its nest. Yet once they reached it, the cat got a shock as there sat a huge vulture. The cat turned on its heels and the little bird jumped out of its mouth. He wanted to protect his eggs in the nest, but the vulture approached him menacingly. As the bird closed its eyes, full of fear, the white gate under him opened and the mountain shook. The vulture flew away and the bird was once again left undisturbed in his home. See you soon. Yes, see you later, Theodore.
There's a lot of sand lying here that the sandstorm blew between the rocks.
Ramon? Yes, brother? Can you tell me the story about the bird again? Sure. Once a little bird sat in front of a white gate that was embedded in a huge mountain. He couldn't go up the mountain because he had broken one of its wings. The bird was lamenting his misfortune when a cat sneaked up. Because the bird had never seen such an elegant animal before, he asked it bluntly if it could help it. The cat was surprised at the courage of the little bird. She decided to wait a while before eating it and asked it what it needed help with. The bird spoke of its nest above the gate and that it absolutely had to get back to its eggs. There was nothing easier for the cat than to climb up there and she offered to carry the bird in her mouth. She planned to eat it and the eggs, but the bird didn't suspect anything. He climbed thankfully into the cat's mouth and she jumped from stone to stone up to its nest. Yet once they reached it, the cat got a shock as there sat a huge vulture. The cat turned on its heels and the little bird jumped out of its mouth. He wanted to protect his eggs in the nest, but the vulture approached him menacingly. As the bird closed its eyes, full of fear, the white gate under him opened and the mountain shook. The vulture flew away and the bird was once again left undisturbed in his home. Hmm. The bird is sitting in front of the gate. Something like that, yes. See you soon. Yes, see you later. been dreaming of this moment all my life. Impressive. The White City. That way. Yes, exactly. It must be somewhere there. What must be there? What are you looking for, Ramon? Our house, Theodore. The house I was born in. You can remember that. You were only five when you left this place. But I see it in my dreams. There. Back there. <coughs> Ramon! Oh no! Ramon! He's unconscious, but he's still breathing. We need the healing water. Fetch it. I'll look after him in the meantime. Where could it be? A huge crevasse. Dizzyingly deep and insurmountable. The upper stone is loose. I wonder if the lion's head means anything. Perhaps this is the house that Ramon grew up in. An attractive old house. Nice architecture. This might actually be my mother's house. It's certainly worth taking a closer look. It somehow feels right. Lone sand, just like you can find all over Zezura. The whole column is studded with scenes from a temple ritual or something like that. Ramon could probably interpret it. Painted walls in the style one would expect in Egypt. A small statue of a deity for domestic use. The statue is holding something, a necklace with a blood red stone. That must be another one of those wedding necklaces, like the one from the cave. The stone is blood red. I know even less about my father than I do about my mother, but this blood red stone proves that they must have loved each other very much. Good to know. 
Must be a deity. Ramon used to give me lectures about this stuff. I should have paid more attention. Ramon had lots of space to play here. Armchairs and chaise long, the like of which I've only seen in manor houses. Clearly drawn by Ramon. That's proof that he was obsessed with the lion-headed goddess even as a child. Who knows what this used to be, but now it's just shards. That's the way up to the rooms on the upper floor. It looks as though the ladder up has been lost. Transparent with sharp edges. Seems to be something like glass. My parents' wedding necklace. The gemstone is blood red. The houses look like they've been hewn straight from the rocks. Because of those buildings, Zazora is called the White City. That's the Temple of Zazura, and inside is the healing water. I'm so very close. The cliffs surround Zazora like a protecting wall. I wonder if it's volcanic rock, or something more like marble. Apart from the two doorways, this house is like all the others. The garden must have been beautiful back then. Everything has long since dried out. Looks like the foundations of a church. But here, within view of the temple, strange. A Zazorian spade. I wonder if that's been willfully destroyed. A Bible, worn and very old, could almost be a first edition. Project Megalomania. The builder doesn't really seem to have got very far. Many months of work have gone into this. I wonder who lived here. I wonder who lived here. You can split stone with that. A date tree. The leaves are completely dried out. I'll take one with me. Sekhmet and even more Sekhmet, so that no one forgets who's the mistress here. I wish I had time to have a better look around. This really is an impressive city.